Okay, when are you ready, Matt? Um, okay, so I, I feel like in the room I'm probably one of the more experienced coaches because of my age. And listening to a lot of the, you know, you're talking over the, the whole program and whatnot, you know, it kind of made me really realise how much I have to learn in coaching. And it's been really eye-opening. So I have learned a lot. Um, one of the biggest things, I think, because surfing is such an individual sport, um, you know, as an athlete, now that I'm working with the World Junior Team and that team environment has been how to sort of get the culture of the team together, um, you know, give those goals out and kind of unite the whole environment. So only into year two we're working with the team, but I'm um, looking forward to go away in a couple of months. So really looking forward to putting all that into practice and we've, we've been doing that with the sort of development programs already. So that would be the key area for me. And, and within that there's lots of things, but that's a generalisation of probably the, the the element that I've really been a lot about, so it's been really good. Awesome, thanks, mate. Straight into it. You're up. <laughs> yeah. You're into it, guys. The key thing for me is probably being the networks, um, just being able to ask people from other sports for their opinion on the same topic. So one of my my key objectives out of the program was to develop and become more confident with uh, using technology on and off the field, um, and having been able to to obviously use those networks, um, develop. I actually do feel a little bit more confident to use it, more so in the in the practice side of things. Um, it's pretty easy to do for reviewing again. Um, it's pretty generic, but using it on field as part of my actual sessions is, is something I wasn't confident with. And picking the brain of, of others has got me there. So that's it's probably the big, biggest thank you to the course. Um, for that. Cool. Thanks, Gary. Uh, same as these two, I mean, the, the culture thing I think was huge because I think that's something I've learned probably the biggest thing is you've got to continually revisit your culture. Uh, it's one thing we sort of did about four or five years ago and then we kind of left it and just thought everybody coming would immerse themselves in our beliefs. And um, having Ralph visit last week was huge because he liked the culture, he liked the, the words, but there's no connection to the current group of kids that we've got. So that made us realise this has to be an ongoing <coughs> document, the culture of the group. And probably the biggest thing as a coach, and I've been coaching full time for a, a long time, uh, um, I think the biggest thing is that I try to um, ask more questions and, and provide fewer answers to the athlete and actually try and help them come to find the answers themselves. I think that's probably the biggest change as a coach. And that's probably the thing the kids are now noticing is that I don't tell them, I wait for them to work it out. It takes a little bit longer and sometimes you you just want that answer faster, but I think it's better that they come to that conclusion themselves. And it seems to be working. It makes my job easier. Isn't it? <laughs> Thanks, Simon. Uh, yeah, I think for me, um, I struggled right from the start, um, re realizing that um, it's not just about what I know specifically for my sport to coach um, my, my athletes, but what I need for myself, you know, as a coach and. Uh, I think I struggled with that understanding of uh, that there are obviously more areas of coaching than just you know getting out and telling someone with their technique or whatever as far as the, the actual sport is concerned. So I've certainly uh, took took a little while to sort of realise some of the uh, the I guess the personal things about coaching and, and what I needed is, is you can um, sometimes only get so far with enthusiasm. For, for what you do and the love and passion of the sport, but then it's sort of uh, trying to work through um, some of the, again, cultural you know, culture issues and uh, um, aspects that, uh, you know, when you sort of feel like uh, things can get a bit uh, tough going for the athletes beyond just the actual doing the sport part of it. So I think, uh, you know, certainly have, you know, taken uh, the length of the course, but certainly realise, you know, that there is a, a lot more to it and, and that's what I realise now that uh, yeah, I can uh, um, work on myself as much as worrying about what my athletes need as well. So, yeah. Thanks Paul. Um, yeah, my, my role with squash, I'm um, in charge of the New Zealand uh, junior, with the junior uh, squad, so I'm not actually the uh, player's individual coach, so I have to work with uh, their coaches. But our biggest, my biggest thing has been um, the culture again. So the two top girls have been playing longer, much better than the others, but they've trained hard and they might be really. But I think um, 
the way I've done the IPPs this year has really worked well. We've just finished since last November five camps, three day camps, and that sort of made me break it. And so I've identified because it's really like hard and squash to measure things because it's sort of sport. So we identified the four areas so the their values and like mentality, setting their process goals, and then their um, rehab and prehab. They had to um, identify things there each, each camp. And also, obviously, their fitness goals, they had targets to reach for each camp in, in their skill areas. And we made it really, um, myself and the assistant coach, really clear to each player. And a big, real big difference was getting in touch with their individual coaches and just really, you know, linking with them and getting on the same page and saying, hey, is this happening with this? And thinking like that. And it's really made the girls accountable. And we've noticed a different change in their attitudes. So. Cool, thanks, Joe. Yeah, the biggest one for me, um, something I have been struggling with for a while as a coach, was you know, building up to a big event, getting some really good success and fantastic results, and then being able to get myself back engaged to, uh, to coach the, the next season or the next team or the next event. And, uh, even within a season, we build up to, to a specific regatta, and then you know, the national champs are two months later. Trying to get myself refocused and, and understanding the process that I needed to go through. And uh, what was it a uh, swimming coach that we had reasonably early on? Um, was talking about the, uh, wow. the clock analogy. Yeah, just you know, where in the clock are you, and how you go around the face, and being able to sort of reset time and for me, what worked was thinking about it a bit like daylight savings, you know, you, you can just chuck the chop, clock back a couple of hours and, and reset and what was the process I went through in that last six weeks leading up to this regatta, okay, another six weeks to the next one, right, where was I six weeks ago, I was here and this is what I did, right, go back there and work through the same process, don't try and reinvent the wheel every time uh, and just getting my head back in the game. And it's, I noticed this year it made a, made a massive difference to me at the national champs because we were able to be switched on and focused on the right things as opposed to trying to think there was some magic trick that I needed to be different as opposed to just doing what I've done before and just working through the same process. So, and that very awesome, thanks Mike. Uh, for me it was probably a lot of the stuff on goal setting. Um, yeah, and really. Uh, I've done a little bit of that with the athletes I coached in the past, but um, you now sort of with the fearless templates and things, and I've got a real process in terms of how to organise it uh, and actually sit down with them and work through and make a plan uh, to do that. And also, also part, uh, part of that was uh, realising that, um, I guess, focusing on the athletes and their performance all the time. Um, but there's also all this stuff we need to focus on ourselves as coaches and for our development so that passes on to the athletes as well and our, for me to be able to understand how to um, work out this goal, goal setting for them was beneficial for me to know where they are at but also really beneficial for them to know for them to know where they are at and the guidelines and how we're going to get there so that was definitely the biggest thing. Nice, thanks Blair. Uh, so a couple of things for me, one one is, was mentioned earlier that just connecting with the other coaches and some of you come to these nights and start chatting and, and it's maybe not then but afterwards or a day or two or a week later there was something, you know, a memory was triggered with something that was said and you're able to put that into practice or utilise whatever that piece of knowledge it was and, and add to it um, the, and there was something already tonight so which I'll take away and, and have a crack at. But the other probably main thing for me was when um, an athlete mentioned that that as coaches, some of the coaching is so complicated, and we, you know, everything so muddled up could be so stressful that um, that all we had to think about was uh, if you make a make training environment enjoyable for us, and we'll keep doing it. Um, you know, that's start in sport. So for me, sort of that just made it's always in the back of my mind to make sure. It doesn't matter how hard the training is or where it is or the competition, if I can ensure that the environment is enjoyable for them, at least they're going to keep them in the sport so they can stay on the pathway to wherever it might be. So 
sort of that's been key for me. Thanks. Um, I guess for me, it, there's no one particular thing that's really stood out. It, it's been a whole lot of tweaking of either thoughts that I've had before, or reigniting thoughts, or some different things that have been in there that, that have all contributed to different things. So it probably hasn't changed one specific aspect, but I think it's quite um, poignant what some of the others have said that networking opportunity and hearing that other sports suffer from the same issues and how they've dealt with those issues has been quite quite enlightening. You know, you get to see that you know everybody suffers from the same things and they've tried this and that's worked quite well for them and that's sort of opened up that opportunity to try and formalise some of those networks that I think will be a really good thing moving forward. And I think um, you know as a group having people with like mindedness it, it, it is quite good to bounce ideas off and that, you know, talk around the cooler sort of thing. So it's um, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Carl.